Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. My name is Timothy Okwebele. Today, I'm going to be talking about methods of drug administration. Oftentimes, we get sick, but sometimes the doctor will prescribe drugs. Some people will not like to take drugs orally. Some people prefer to take injections, while some prefers to take it orally. But majority of the people that want the oral drugs are more than the number of people that want injection or any other um, way. So today, like I said, it's methods of drug administration. So we're looking at, uh, first of all, that there are different methods of um, oral administration. We have the oral administration, Mm -hmm. There's a method of drug administration. We have oral administration. We have uh, that's number one type of method of drug administration. We have the sublingual administration. That's number two. Then we have the the rectal administration, the uncomfortable one. That's number three. Then we have the epithelial administration. Mm -hmm. That's number four. Then we have the inhalation. Number five, the injection. Number six, then you have the implants. Nowadays, people are um, scared of the uh, uh, being um, uh, being uh, letting drug being planted inside under, underneath their skin. So uh, we're going to start with oral administration as number one method of uh, drug administration. You know, right? So when you go to hospital, you're sick, and the doctor look at you, asks you, this, um, "What is wrong with you?" You know, you tell the doctor it's like this. You have these symptoms and all that. And after that, you prescribe drugs, which you go to the pharmacy. And when the doctor prescribes drugs, he's giving you an oral administration when he considers one that will suit you. There are things to consider when taking oral administration. That's drugs, tablets. You know, there are several things that occur in the stomach and why the drugs being delivered inside you. So we're going to occur. So you can say. Oral administration taken by mouth, so it is the main preferred route of administration by most patients. So most patients prefer the oral administration. That's the oral route of administration of drug. Yeah. So, but in this type of administration, or oral route, you have some drugs interact with food through oral administration. So, and some of these drugs are like, say, for example, I put here tetracycline. As it says, the dragon binds strongly to ions which inhibit absorption. absorption. So, you know, when you take it to the cycling, it binds to what? Ions. Which strongly binds to ions which inhibit uh, um, what? Inhibits absorption. So, when you take to the cycling and drink milk at the same time, some people take um, to the cycling with milk, it, the milk will inhibit the the, the the absorption of the of the tetracycline because the tetracycline will bind strongly on the ions in, in the milk. So that's why I say so you have to avoid milk when taking tetracycline. Why some drugs bind to other drugs to do what to inhibit absorption. Okay? But drugs are through arrive is one of the surfaces anyway. But some of the drugs bind to each other to inhibit absorption. So the drug is not being well, well absorbed inside. So some drugs like cholesterol binds to warfarin to alter efficacy and should be taken differently. So warfarin and cholesterol mine cannot be taken together. Then you have to do it separate the two together for it to so that they don't bind together to alter the what alter efficacy. Okay. And I know efficacy is the maximum response of a drug, like I said before in various uh, videos. So I cannot go deeply to talk more about oral administration because, you know, when you first take the drug in the mouth and you drink water, it goes through different processes. It goes through first pass metabolism, uh, through the metabolism enzymes. It's so a first pass metabolism through enzymes in, in, in the liver. And it's going through process of acidity of the stomach and all sorts of other. before you start talking about absorption and blood brain the rest and all that. So we, I've said it in various videos, so I'm not going to be talking much about it. But like I have already pinpointed that when you take a uh, tetracycline, you don't drink, take it with uh, milk because it will inhibit the absorption. And also some drugs also 
bind to each other like close, close to mind and more free bind to get to alter efficacy and I should be taken differently. Then we we'll go to sublingual administration. This sub, sublingual administration is another root of drug administration. You know, when I talk about drug administration, I'm talking about how you can take drugs, the roots of administration of drugs. The various roots of the aura, sublingual administration. These drugs are brought under the tongue. You take the drug, you put it underneath your tongue. The reason why you put it on, underneath your tongue there, there's something if you open your tongue, it goes straight, it absorbs straight into the bloodstream. It goes straight into your bloodstream. And um, they are rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream. You see what I just said? Um, through this route, we can avoid the uh, acidity of the stomach and liver enzymes. Like I said before, that when you take the drug, that's why some drugs are not good to, to chew some, you know? Some people get drugs and they chew it. Some drugs are not meant to be chewed, they're meant to be swallowed. You know, because of this being absorbed directly into the bloodstream. So you're not supposed to chew some drugs, and some are chewable, some are not chewable. Yeah? So drugs like this should not be chewed. You should just put it underneath your tongue and it goes directly. So when you go directly and are being absorbed, what you're looking at is the stomach acidity and the liver enzymes are avoided. You know, the stomach, the pH of the stomach is too acidic. Okay? So when you take a drug, the drug survives, some drugs may not survive the acidity of the stomach and some of the liver enzymes and first pass metabolism cannot survive it. So that's why it's one of the best routes where you can take a drug. Some drugs follow this route, put it underneath your drink, uh, the tongue, it goes straight into your bloodstream and that helps you and to avoid the acidity of the stomach and enzymes. So you have the rectal administration. This is a very uncomfortable um, administration. This is a very, a very uncomfortable route of, uh, of delivering drugs into the system. So I said, yeah, it's a very uncomfortable route because it is targeted for a local effect. Absorption into the bloodstream is very efficient. Yeah. So when I use efficient here, yes, some people, when, when their drugs go through their rectal system, through the anus, they put liver drugs. It goes, it's efficient, but it's for local effect. But it's very uncomfortable. Imagine somebody lying down and trying to pass through and you know that kind of thing. Some people will you know, wouldn't like that sort of thing. So you look at epithelial administration. No, epithelial administration, look at how I said it. I said these are drugs applied to the epithelial cells, the skin, most topical drugs. You know, this is when you go, you know, topical drugs are drugs you apply on, on, on top of the skin, but the, the skin absorbs it. It is get absorbed by the skin, and um, steroids are applied topically to treat local skin irritation. Okay, so some of the drugs and you can take eczema uh, and all those kind of different things that are topical. These are some topical creams that can cure ulcers as well. You know, there are different topical um, creams that are being produced now that can cure ulcers. So they are called topical. Creams. So steroids are applied topically to treat local skin irritation. They have transdermal drugs can be absorbed to enter into the bloodstream. Others are nicotine. You know, nicotine patches and people who are smoking cigarettes and they don't want they form the habit, they don't can't leave it. They put nicotine patches on their skin, it's been absorbed. Then they have the nasal sprays and so on. Then next one will take us to inhalation. Well, this is a quick lecture, you know. Inhalation. So inhalation, inhalation of sprays, direct drugs. Hmm? Such as volatile and gaseous uh, and anesthetic or anti asthma asthma drugs, anti asthmatic drugs. Yeah. So we, when you talk about inhalation, some people are giving um, some gaseous anesthetics and and ask some people who are asthmatic they take sprays, you know, just to clear the airwaves and all that. And that's 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 a part of inhalation of uh, of drugs. Yeah. So we look about injection. Like for instance, some people prefer injection than drugs. Some people can't take drugs, swallow it. The, the pain of putting the drugs into the system and swallowing it, you know, it's difficult for them. So they prefer to take injection. So injection, have drugs can be injected under the skin. Subcutaneous. There are some people who are using uh, people who have a. Uh, 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 diabetics, and, you know, you can use so subcutaneous and under the skin, yeah. Then they have uh, intramuscular. Hmm? People, you are giving on your buttocks and giving intramuscular. 
then you have the one into the the antithetical this is the, for instance if I go like this um, you see intravenous so I'm giving intravenous yes I just pointed intravenous then and some people just are delivered through the spinal cord as well okay so um, that's the intrathetical um, through the, 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 the spinal cord and intravenous through the blood through the vein as well so yeah also when we leave that when we go to that's injection here we go to the implants continuous continuously driven mini pumps so there's some mini pumps that are implanted inside the skin underneath the skin that does what that releases insulin at various uh, varying rates there's, there's, when they know when the blood is lacking insulin when the system lacks insulin the pumps injects a certain amount of insulin into the system so when the insulin, when the, when when, it's, when the sugar level is high inject a particular amount of insulin because it's imparted inside so depending on blood glucose level like i said say continuously driven many pumps that can release insulin at varying rates depending on blood glucose level these are planted under the skin like i said so it's, it depends on the level of blood glucose level that's how uh, these implants are these days you hear about people saying about coronavirus some vaccine how they can plant it underneath the skin some people are scared of some certain numbers and all that you know bringing different accusations and uh, that could give them you know how about implants if not for the coronavirus but this one is the glucose has been there it's called driven controversy driven mini pumps the mini pumps in the point to the system has been there all along so thank you for watching that's we've gotten to the end of the lecture like i said it's going to be a brief one and I'm, I'm not going to detail it much so thank you for watching and and for your time in listening um i would advise you to subscribe to my channel timothy equivalent and when you're subscribing if you want to get more information or more uh, lectures as pertain to science and other things i'm going to be teaching on this channel i want you to subscribe and when you subscribe you go to the to the top of the of the screen and you see a bell and you click on the bell and um You'll be getting more of my videos and be alerted. Every time I load a video, you'll be alerted. You'll see on your video, you can on your phones or your mini mini tabs or whatever, and you'll be able to watch my videos. Thank you very much again for watching and for your time. Good luck. Bye.